Did your doctor know that you are on a low carb or ketogenic diet? When you tell your doctor that you're following a low carb or ketogenic diet, does your understanding of what you're doing match what your doctor thinks you're doing? So we're going to talk a little bit about that in this video today. And, and I think that, that you know, some of the insights we've gained might surprise you. Now let's have a conversation today about um, low carb or ketogenic diets and the medical community that, you know, that we all have to deal with, you know, from time to time. So recently I had to have a PET scan. And as part of that procedure, I was instructed to follow a low carb diet uh, 24 hours prior to that scan. Right. No problem. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm so on that. I've been doing that for four years. Like, like I don't even have to think about it. So uh, a couple of days after I had that, got that scheduled and they explained that to me, I, I actually received in the mail, you know, those same instructions plus a sample um, daily menu of what a low carb diet would be in case, you know, I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, before we go further, we should, we should talk about, so a PET scan stands, it's PET, it stands for positron emission tomography, and it's a type of x-ray. And what they do is they inject you with a, a radioactive tracer that is bound to a glucose substrate. And you're, metabolically active tissues in your body will attract that glucose and, you know, subsequently that, that radioactive tracer. And then they do the x-ray scan. It's kind of like a CT scan. And they can see like the places in your body that are, that are metabolically active, what's going on, how your tissues are functioning. Right. So they don't want you to have a high blood glucose reading when you go in. Right. I mean, if you have a high blood glucose reading that could, you know, kind of alter the test or, or, you know, skew some of the results. So that's, so they, they want you to kind of be pretty controlled. Um, so let's get back to that controlled carbohydrate diet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put my glasses on here because I'm an older guy. So, uh, I'm going to read through just what they, they said for breakfast and then we'll go through just kind of a list of what they included on this. Um, it, it literally, it took me a couple of minutes just to tally this up. Um, so for breakfast, they recommend one medium fresh orange or one small banana. Haven't had a banana for four years. <laughs> uh, one slice of 100% whole wheat toast. That's, I think that's important. A half a cup of low sugar bran or high fiber cereal. Now, honestly, who's going to, when you pour cereal, are you going to pour like a half, half a cup? cup? Yeah, that's pretty small. Um, one cup of low fat milk. And then they also include a teaspoon of margarine uh, and sugar substitute, if you'd like. Yeah, so right there, I mean, you, you tallied it up really quickly, and I don't even think you have the milk I in didn't here. include the milk initially. Yeah, yeah, so you have about 57 grams of carbohydrates in breakfast alone, and that's more than a, a, the keto range that's going to knock. Now, they're not necessarily going for keto. They're going for lower carb, but right. still, that's yeah. going to be high. This is twice. I mean, this is two days' worth of carbs right. um, for me just in the breakfast alone. Right. And so. they also have margarine listed there, which is vegetable oil. Yes. Not healthy. Right. Right. Uh, um, so this is, this is, you know, the rest of the day. So uh, a banana, an apple, low-fat milk, three cups of low-fat milk, actually, uh, whole grain bread, whole grain or bran cereal, brown rice or pasta, berries, and crackers. You actually get crackers and cheese as a bedtime snack. <laughs> yeah, bedtime. Another thing that we don't really <laughs> recommend, bedtime yeah. snacks. Right. Uh, so when we added all that up, uh, including the, the, uh, the three cups of low-fat milk, that's 215 grams of carbohydrates. Right. Certainly higher than what we would consider low-carb. And, 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 and the, the numbers of how many grams you can have to be at the different stages of, of a diet are very, very fuzzy. Um, the standard guidelines that I've seen have said 225 grams of carbs is kind of a standard diet. I actually think that's kind of low for I most people. Low, yeah. um, but then to by our measures, a low carb diet starts at 125 grams or less. And to be in the keto range, you certainly have to be under 50 total grams of carbs. Right. to, you know, even have a chance of getting into ketosis. Uh, so, you know, and, and, and we're, we're making a little bit of light there, but, you know, in, in no way are we, are we saying this to bash the medical uh, community. It's just that your doctor may have a very different understanding of, you know, a picture in his mind or her mind of what a low-carb diet looks like than, than you're picturing. 
Right. So you, I mean, you're using the exact same words, mm-hmm. but like your dictionaries are different. Mm-hmm. You know what? When you say it, that totally different picture comes up there. It's important that your doctor understands what you're doing. Um, you know, the, uh, different tests or procedures or things that you may have to go through may be affected by your diet and making sure that they've got a good understanding of what you're doing, I think it's paramount. And then look, you know, medicine is, is kind of a big institution and big institutions do not make changes easily or quickly. You know, there, there's, you know, there's research and things have been out there for decades that still has not kind of filtered down to individual clinicians. It, it just, it gets stuck in that bureaucracy and that's the way it is. So, you know, you're going to have dealings with the medical community uh, at some point in your, your lifetime. And you need to have, you need to be on the same wavelength with your doctor. You really do. So let's talk about kind of the, the elephant in the room. Um, had to have a PET scan. Um, I've been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, it's um, throat cancer that spread to my lymph nodes. And, um, you know, we don't want to be cavalier about it. Um, it's serious and it's scary. And, uh, um, you know, this isn't going to become, you know, the keto and cancer right. channel um, in no way, shape, or form. Uh, so far, uh, you know, it's been like a whirlwind of three weeks. I, I, you know, I had tests and scans and surgical procedures and biopsies. And I feel like, you know, I feel like every other day I'm getting poked or prodded or, or, or something. And, you know, it's, it's not going to get any better, uh, from, from here on out. We've got a long ways to go yet. Um, the good news is that, that, you know, I've got a very good team of doctors and, and my, my primary surgeon, uh, oncologist, you know, I, he, he feels that I've got you know, pretty good chances of survival. Um, you know, and we actually met with him today and uh, we're going to get a surgery scheduled because I just wanted out. You know, he said that we could we could either just do radiation or we could you know remove it. And I'm like, you know, get it out. Um, so we're waiting to have that scheduled. Um, Did you explain what it, what it was? <laughs> yes, yes. We've been through so much. I yeah, can't even yeah, follow. Yeah, um, it's yeah. throat thro- cancer. Oh. It, it's actually from a it's it's from a virus. Um, it's it's not due to you know, anything, anything else. It's not a lifestyle thing. It's uh, actually HPV, which was kind of news to us. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we've yeah heard it's of kind of a weird thing, women. but, but it is, it is, uh, uh, it's fairly well known with uh, H- HPV. But anyway, it, it has spread to my lymph nodes. The PET scan was to see if it had spread anywhere beyond that. And, you know, thank God it hadn't. Um, that was a, that was a tough day waiting for those results because I, you know, we were we were both quite scared of that. So here's the thing. I mean, we've we've been running kind of on short notice to appointments and different you know tests and things here and there. Uh, so I, the the videos on this channel are going to be maybe a little less frequent. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to try and keep everybody posted as time goes on. And and I, you know, ahead of time, I want to thank everybody. Um, for your support. You know, we have the best community of people on YouTube, I think. I mean, you, you people are fantastic. I know that you're caring um, about both of us. So um, if I'm not real timely, you know, getting back with your comments, you know, cut me a little slack. Um, but, uh, but we'll be back and uh, we'll kind of keep you up to date and, uh, you know, keep us in your prayers. Yes, and, please. Um, we, we accept prayers. <laughs> yeah. We definitely do. So, um, so I, th- I think we'll, we'll sign off with that and uh, we'll catch up with you next time. All right. Thanks. I didn't, didn't think that that was going to... I know. That it was going to affect me like that, talking about it. All right. Turn off your mic.